My name is Wendy Myers of MyersDetox.com and today we have Brett Boyer on the show and he is an expert on detoxification, on toxins that are in cookware that you're all using. I know you guys have a lot of questions about what cookware is safe, what are the best non-toxic cookware recommendations. We have all that info on the show uh, is La Creuset a good brand to use? Is uh, cast iron good to use? Copper, stainless steel, enamel cookware, nonstick. We've got all of that information today for you on the show. We're also going to be talking about niacin flush detox protocols for infrared saunas, how to do them, how effective they are. Brett Boyer has a really popular Facebook group uh, all about sauna detox. And so he's an expert in this area. He's written a book on how to do like a three week nice and flush infrared sauna protocol. And we're going to review all of that today on the show. And I'm so excited. I created a mitochondria detox because I worked with thousands of clients and the number one complaint was fatigue. So many people are tired today, including myself when I was first starting to on my health journey and starting to detox. My number one complaint was fatigue. I wanted more energy so I could exercise and just do what I wanted to do, live my life. So I created what's called the mitochondria detox. It's in my research, I discovered there are certain metals arsenic, aluminum, tin, thallium, and cesium. Some of these you've never heard before, but they will poison enzymes that transport nutrients into your mitochondria that make your energy. And if you aren't able to get the nutrients you need into your mitochondria, you're not gonna be able to make the energy that your body is capable of. So I created this simple three-step system that you can do to improve your energy levels. So just go to mitochondriadetox.com to learn more. Our guest today is Brett Boyer. He's an expert in two very important areas of health and wellness, diet and detoxification. And he spent the first 10 years of his wellness journey studying and mastering diet and proper nutrition, and the next 10 years studying toxins and detoxification. And he's very thorough in his research, and as a result, he finds important things that most people miss. He loves sharing his knowledge to save you the many years of research and experimentation that it took him. And he's been featured on many websites as well as on the Ben Greenfield podcast. Through his extensive research on detoxification, he found the most well-proven detox method in the world. And this detox protocol used to cost $10,000 and it had to be done in a clinic. Brett wanted to make this helpful detox protocol available to many people in need free of charge. And after years of experimentation and research, he has transformed a very difficult and complex detox protocol into a simple detox that can be done in just three weeks by about anyone. His improvements to this detox method have been so profound that many of the top clinics in the world are now adopting his methods. He's created a huge social media following because he provides loads of valuable information, including of free books on how to do this amazing detox protocol. And you can find that Facebook group at facebook.com slash groups slash sauna detox. And he runs the largest sauna detox group in the world where he educates people on daily tips on how to avoid toxins. You can get his free ebook on how, uh, how very effective this detox protocol is, information on how this de- detox protocol can help with most health conditions, lots of tips and tricks, and a complete list of Brett's improvements to this protocol. It's a niacin flush infrared sauna protocol, and we're going to discuss it in detail on the show today. Brett, thank you so much for coming on the show. Sure thing. Glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Why don't you tell the listeners a little bit about yourself and how you came to become an expert in detoxification? Sure. So I spent the first 10 years of my health and wellness journey studying diet and nutrition. And as I was doing that, um, I had to do a uh, detox to change diets. And I did a 17-day supervised water fast, water-only fast. And that radically improved my health. And that got me to thinking, wow, there's more to, I mean, I I knew that, but there's more to good health than just diet. And um, after I figured out the diet, I thought, okay, I'm going to really delve into detoxification. And um, the last 10 years, that's essentially all that I've done is uh, detoxification, uh, studying and teaching and that sort of thing. 
Yeah, and that's why I wanted to pick your brain about cookware toxicity, because this is something that I've done yeah. blog posts about and Facebook posts, and people just go crazy because they're they're terrified of their cookware, apparently. <laughs> uh, right. But there's, there's a lot of really toxic choices out there, and many people don't realize how toxic their cookware is, the, the amount of toxins that are getting into the food, all this healthy food that they're buying or growing, and it's very, very expensive, and then they're adding toxins to the food. So let's go over every different type of cookware. Uh, why don't we start with nonstick, because that is probably the most toxic category, um, but there's also lots of green brands and a lot of brands that claim to be non-toxic. What's the deal? Yeah, I think if you threw them all out and considered them all toxic, I don't think you'd be going uh, far astray. So I was actually hired by a company about 10 years ago to research cookware toxicity, and I wasn't sure what I would find. They just wanted to sell a non-toxic cookware, and so they said, Brett, take as much time as you need, but research this extensively and find out the truth. And they knew me well, so they knew that I would do that. And um, this, uh, obviously, we, I think most of us here know that Teflon is really bad and we should avoid that. But there's been a bunch of greenwashing that's happened with these, um, I'm not going to mention any names, but with many of these nonstick cookwares that are supposed to be uh, no chemicals or whatever. Because every time you contact the company and say, hey, what are you putting on it? And then you contact the other company that's making what they put on it and get the material data safety sheet, you find out that it's toxic petrochemical soup. And whatever's in your cookware, a portion of it is going to migrate into the food um, in 99% of cases. And so having petrochemicals in your cookware is the worst idea possible. There is a way, which we'll talk about in a minute, under when we talk about my cookware recommendations, to make your cook a clean cookware nonstick without any petrochemicals. Yeah. So, well, let's talk about that. Let's let's uh, talk about that tips yeah. to make make your cookware nonstick without having to use a toxic nonstick sure. software or cookware. Yeah, sure. So ideally, one of the best cookwares that I actually found is it's interesting because like everybody's throwing out their stainless steel cookware to buy all these other types of cookware. And it turns out that stainless steel is actually one of the least toxic options that there is. Ideally, if money's no object, you can go ahead and get 316 gray titanium, like Salad Master brand. I don't work for them, but it's one of the best brands out there if you if money's no option, but it's marginally better than just good stainless steel. Um, so the the key to using stainless steel cookware, you can actually make it nonstick. They've done it for hundreds of years. Like if you watch the cooking shows, uh, especially in the la prior to about five or ten years ago, they all all the professional chefs used stainless steel cookware and they made it work. Well, how did they do it? Well, they know this old trick. You can Google it called hot pan cold oil no stick. So if you get the pan good and hot, but not too hot, and I'll tell you how to do it in a second, and then put cold oil, not like refrigerator, but just, you know, room temperature oil on it and then let it warm up for about five seconds and then put something on it. It's not going to stick. And so that's just a, a trick that chefs have known for a long, long time, but consumers haven't known. And so the way I gauge the pan temperature is I put drops of water on it. And if the water evaporates, it's not hot enough. As soon as the water dances, it's kind of weird. The, the, the little water droplets just dancing on the cookware. It's not evaporating or anything. Then, you know, the pan's hot enough. Then you put your oil on there. And I've even made my own sourdough pancakes, which it's like plaster. It sticks to anything. <laughs> and if you get it right, it does not stick at all. So you can cook eggs, anything you want. If you do it properly, and it takes some time, but you can do it without any chemicals, without any toxins. And that's the way you do it. It's hot pan, cold oil, no stick. Okay, fantastic. And so let's talk about some of the other types of cookware that people commonly use and think are safe. What about cast iron? Grandma's been using for decades. What is she doing to herself? Uh, well, she's probably hurting her arm if an old lady is trying to lift <laughs> up her cast iron pot. Um, so uh, th there's two categories of toxins. There's uh, there's metals, which our bodies have been somewhat adapted to detoxifying. And then there's petrochemicals, which are toxic at literally hundreds of thousand times lower levels. Um, so I don't put cast iron cookware. If somebody was using it, I wouldn't say, oh, my gosh, you're going to just you have to throw it out. It's a disaster. I mean, if I was out camping and that's all somebody had. I wouldn't refuse the food like I would with some other forms of cookware, but it's it's far less than ideal uh, for a couple of reasons. Um, one is the the um, iron in there can actually oxidize the food, and so if you end up storing the food, 
because of the reaction in it, it can oxidize the food, which is not good. But the primary issue is is, is cooking it in non-organic iron because that that iron, it's, it's like shaving little iron filings in your food. That's not the way we're supposed to get iron. We're supposed to get iron from our food when it's in an organic state, bound to carbon so that we can absorb it. And some people are already iron toxic, and so they don't. You don't want to be forced to take a iron multivitamin that's non-organic, because that's what you're doing every time you're using the cast iron cookware. Again, yeah. it's not disastrous for most people um, compared to some of the petrochemical or Teflon options, um, but it's less than ideal. Yeah, and our bodies are ev evolutionarily designed to not let go of iron because we need that. We need it for the hemoglobin in our blood, and um, it has health benefits. But it's just a form of iron we don't absorb readily and it's really problematic for men more so because women we shed iron every month uh, with our right. menses so it's uh, women don't really have to worry about that so much but it's like you said it's just not ideal right exactly yeah and so let's talk about um la crusette and enamel coated cookware and there's other brands obviously but la crusette's probably the most famous what are some of the issues with enamel coated cookware yeah. So the issue with those, um, and I, I'm not going to pick on any brand in particular. Um, but I, I, did have, I am. I'm going to pick on some brands. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, so I think it's pronounced Le Creuset. Uh, yeah, I remember okay. that from my, uh, from my French class. Okay, um, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, the problem with the Le Creuset cookware and these enamel cookwares, regardless of the company, is the enamel coating. So like, how are they making this? Or, you know, are they making it out of some like organic coconut and hemp oil and they're gluing it on? I mean, how are they making it? And so what it is, is it's a petrochemical liner that they're putting on there. It's a glaze, essentially, that they're putting actually on the cookware. So they're using cast iron typically on the skillets, and then they're putting that glaze on there. Well, when you, and I'll show you how you can actually test this yourself at home with like $20 worth of test equipment. And when you do this, you will be shocked at what gets into your food. But when you get the material data safety sheets on this, there's all sorts of warnings, like this is really toxic and yet they're putting it on there. And, and the thing to remember, this is a really important point for your guests, and I'm sure you know this, that toxins migrate with heat friction and acidity are things that migrate toxins. So when you're talking about cooking, well, you have massive amounts of heat, just like a water bottle out in the sunlight when it's hot, migrates the plastic into the into the water more. The same thing happens when you're when you're cooking. And then if you're cooking something acidic, then it's a double whammy, so you're getting whatever is in there, whatever it's made out of. And so the question is, is would you put that enamel in your food? Well, no, of course not. Well, that's what you're doing when you're using this cookware despite the unfortunate, uh, there's just a, a large group think around this and, but there is a simple way that you can test and verify this for yourself. And I, I did this, um, with, um, a crock pot, which, so I got the crock pot, new crock pot and I, I cleaned, washed it out real good, rinsed it out. So there was nothing, no particles in it. And then got a TDS meter, which is used by water purification places just to tell total dissolved solids. It just tells you if anything's in the water. It doesn't tell you what's in it, but it tells you if anything's in it. And then I got some distilled water, which is zero parts per million. And then I turned on the crock pot overnight, put the lid on it so there, there was no evaporation or concentration. And then in the morning, turned it off, cooled it off, and then tested it. And there were nine parts per million of enamel, which is what, what it had to be because I had a lid on, nothing floated into the pot. So it was actually the enamel from the cookware. And, and that was not super high heat, you know, it was, it was thermal regulated at 200 degrees or less. And, um, it migrated those toxins and those petrochemical toxins are, are like, like BPA, they're hormone disruptors. So they're, they're active in the parts per trillion. So we had parts per million, nine parts per million in the water. And so that's like totally messing up your hormones if you're using that enamel cookware. So, I do not recommend that. It's one of the worst. I would not eat food out of there unless I was starving, which I've gone 20 days without yeah. food. So. <laughs> so you're like, so, I can pass. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, and that's the problem with crock pots and with rice cookers or using nonstick. And a lot of our, you know, uh, I, I have like a, um, uh, uh, I used to have a, uh, what do you call it? It's an air fryer where it cooks uh -huh, the food uh -huh. by air, but it's, yep, you know, the, yep. it's a nonstick, uh, you know, component yeah. inside. And so right. these are all problems uh, for, you know, various, um, you know, uh, cookware that we're using, uh, cooking sheets and all types of utensils uh, use nonstick right. type toxins on them as well. 
Yeah, a good solution is called the Instant Pot. I don't know if you've heard of that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are highly recommended. You know, it's got a stainless steel liner, and you can you can cook in it. You can like kind of like air fry. It's not, you know, you pressure cook. You can do all sorts of things, and it's got a stainless steel liner, so it's very very clean. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, I used to have yeah. one of those. Well, I, I didn't. I got rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because well, I oh, I cooked a pot of chili in it. I, it was totally disgusting, so I returned it. <laughs> ah, well, they have good reviews. People love people love them. You just have to learn how to use them. Yeah, yeah. So. Well, I think I just like the caramelization of cooking something on the stove. So I'm just gonna do uh, my cooking the long way rather than the short way. <laughs> sure, sure. So let's talk about plates. We've been talking about cookware. Let's talk about plates, flatware, and other types of dishes that people use. What are some of the problems that people can encounter with toxins in relation to their plates and knives and forks? I'd say probably one of the biggest things is, um, is using a dishwasher. A lot of people don't realize that, but um, the way a dishwasher works is it uses highly abrasive uh, cleaners, even if they're non-toxic cleaners, and the liner of the dishwasher, unless you have like a Bosch, is going to be plastic. And even if you have a Bosch dishwasher where it's stainless steel, you've got the plastic rack. And so it's going to take those plastic particles, heat them up, because again, we have heat, we have friction, so that's going to migrate the toxins from the dishwasher and then essentially melt them, a layer of toxins on your plates that easily comes off, which is the problem. Um, so... Uh, and I, I don't have a great solution. I hand wash my dishes. I hate it. Okay. I don't like it, but I, I, I hate toxins more than washing my own dishes. So that's probably the biggest thing to worry about. Um, once you've cleaned up your dish soap and you're hand washing your dishes, then again, you want to remember about heat. So if you're, if you just put a, a plate, a sandwich on a plate, no big deal. But if you put a hot steak on a plate, well, you've got the same enamel problem. It's going to migrate those toxins and especially with bowls because you're more likely to put like a soup bowl. A salad bowl doesn't matter because you don't have heat, you don't have acidity, but a soup bowl is going to matter. And so in that case, for me, all my dishes are all glass, clear glass. And I, um, and I can give you a link you can put in the, in the description below of a lady who I know who's has a like $20,000 lead testing machine and she tests like all these different brands and uh, so for like coffee mugs, for example, that's that if you want to reduce your toxic load as far as dishware type of thing, the number one thing you can do is never, ever, ever, ever like your religious nut, never, ever carry around a coffee cup. That's a disposable coffee cup. If you go to the coffee place, carry a stainless steel mug and immediately pour it in there because those are not even baked on enamel. That's just like sprayed on petrochemical soup nastiness that we, again, you have heat and acidity. I see people like Dave Asprey. I'm like, Oh, you're the coffee guy. What are you doing? You yeah. carrying around a, a, a coffee full of toxins that it was good to start with. And so, so that's, um, so that's an important thing is to have like clear glass uh, mugs because it's, you're, you're going to use those for heat and then soup bowls would probably be the, the two most important things. So if you want to have pretty dishware, which, you know, a lot of people do, well, you know, for private use, you know, when you're just around the house, that then I would recommend the glass bowls for soup. So mainly where you have heat, um, and then of course make sure that your um, that your silverware is stainless steel and not um, you know not aluminum. Um, but other than that, uh, so those are the main things with yeah. your uh, dishware. Utensils. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize that a lot of silverware, so to speak, is actually aluminum, especially if it's really, really light. And that aluminum is right. going straight into your mouth and into your brain. You don't want to be cooking with cheap aluminum uh, or eating with cheap aluminum flatware. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, it's sad that they banned it. They banned aluminum cookware in Europe. And that's actually one of the reasons that I don't like to eat out because a lot of the cookware at restaurants is aluminum cookware, sadly, because it costs like a dollar less for a pan for aluminum than stainless steel. And so, yeah, it's aluminum's really, really problematic. Yeah. And th that is one of the, uh, the bigger problems with eating out is that you do get that aluminum exposure, not to mention the GMO canola oil, not to mention the regular table salt and just ugh, it's an inflammatory mess. And so let's talk a little bit about, um, are there any other types of problematic cookware that come to mind, like copper cookware or anything else? Well, again, with the copper cookware, usually you only have like um, 
uh, either wealthy people or like high-end chefs that use copper because it transfers heat better. And so they're making their um, sauces that you have to have ideal temperature regulation. Um, and so, of course, you're going to have the problem with copper cookware as you, as you do with the cast iron. You're going to have uh, unwanted amounts of copper potentially in your food. Um, but most people aren't drawn to those because they're expensive. So it's not it's not something I talk about too much. Um, glass cookware is a is an option if somebody doesn't want um, if if you can get lead free glass cookware. Um, but it's not a great choice because it doesn't um, transfer heat very well. It's harder to clean. Um, but it is it is is a, a good option. And, and if anybody's like super radical and they want to try the most non toxic cookware possible, if you're like what I I did, it's a pain. But you can get like soapstone cookware. It's actually made out of out of rock essentially. Um, and talk, you know, you're going to get actual good minerals from that. Um, but it's a horrible pain and it keeps the odors of the food and everything else. So stainless steel is really your best choice. Um, and ideally titanium, as long as you get a good brand stainless steel, well-reviewed one, that's really the cleanest choice of cookware that you can get. Um, what are your thoughts on ceramic? Well, again, ceramic is going to have that enamel coating. You know, I remember when I took ceramic classes, that's what they do is you, is you have the base, and then you put a glaze over it, which is highly, highly toxic. I could not believe when I looked at these glazes, like you see in the mugs and stuff, like your coffee mug, I could not believe the toxin levels. I mean, it was ridiculous. When I read the material data safety sheets, I'm like, why in the heck are they putting this on a food product that you know that has heat and acidity where it's just, oh, yeah, yeah. So it's the same glaze as you're getting with the Le Creuset cookware, Okay. essentially. Okay. And so let's talk a little bit about what you're well known for, which is a, a nice and flush sauna detox method that you work to simplify. Why don't you tell us uh, uh, first some of the benefits of infrared sauna use, health benefits, and then your your method that you've helped to simplify? Yeah, sure. Um, the list of benefits of sauna use, as you know, as a big proponent of sauna use, is uh, it's really, really a long list. Uh, but firstly, it'll it'll help you to live longer. Um, you might be able to live to 109 mm -hmm. um, by using a, by using a sauna <laughs> because the, the all-cause mortality index of uh, sauna users, according to, I think it was in JAMA, was 40% uh, reduction, which is just like unheard of. So your odds of dying of any major disease are almost cut in half by using a sauna regularly. And like, how hard is it? We're not talking about doing a Ben Greenfield run up the mountain with a sandbag on your shoulders. <laughs> We're talking about just sitting on your butt in a sauna, you know? So uh, a lot of benefits, detoxification, cardiovascular fitness, um, many, many benefits uh, to lowers your blood pressure, relieve stress, many, many benefits uh, to sauna use. Um, so long as you're using a sauna that, and it would be negligent not to say this, as long as you're using a sauna that's truly low in EMFs and isn't loaded with toxins, because that's a big darn issue with saunas that that the sauna industry is unregulated. And so you have all these corrupt sauna companies that are making these cheap made in China saunas that are filled with loose and toxins. Toxins migrate with heat and you're in the sauna. It heats up. Those toxins migrate. It's unventilated and you're breathing deeply and you're mostly naked. It's soaking in your pores. So that's a big deal to make sure you have a sauna without toxins. And then the other issue with most saunas, and this is why it's not just, oh yeah, just go use an infrared sauna. Um, it's, it's not that simple because um, the, there's the issue of EMFs, which, as you know, is a major issue. But what people don't realize about saunas is there, there are regulations with, with EMFs, like in Russia and Sweden and World Health Organization says it should be below three milligauss, somewhere between two and three milligauss. Well, if you're using your hair dryer, that should be below three milligauss. So should your sauna. But there's a big difference. Your hair dryer you use for five minutes on a small portion of your body. Okay, so to, to factor out your total EMF, you have to figure out the relative level, the exposure area, and the duration. If you're in a same, so let's say your hair dryer is 10 milligauss, and if you're in a sauna that's 10 milligauss, you think, well, it's 10 milligauss, right? Same thing. No, 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 no. You're in your sauna for up to an hour, and your whole body's exposed. I've, I've done the math on this. With the same milligauss level, you're getting 527 times the EMFs in a sauna that you're trying to heal in. I mean, you're not trying to heal when you're drying your hair. But when you're in a sauna, you're trying to heal. So you can get 527 times EMFs. So that's why it's a really big deal wow. to get a, tr a true low EMF sauna. And running the largest sauna detox group in the world, I've learned to trust nobody other than my group members who show me the EMF meters. These people aren't selling anything. They're like, okay, I bought ABC sauna. 
oh my gosh, look at this. Cause it's unregulated. So they all lie about their saunas. Yeah. So it's a, it's a sad state of affairs, but you really want to make sure that it's legitimately low in EMFs and legitimately not filled with toxins. I mean, that's just, just foundational. No, it's um, interesting. So Sauna space is one of the only companies that has a, uh, an EMF Faraday inside their Faraday sauna to, yeah, to right. block the, the sauna, to block the EMF. It's interesting. Just don't bring your cell phone in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you create exactly. a microwave. Literally, it would, it would shield it. Yeah, no, they, that's that's a, a a good point. They've uh, they've done a good job that way. Um, I would I would rather see if I saw that, but if a better investment of that extra money would be to buy that same cage, it, money wise, and put it over your bed. Because EMFs at night, as Dr. Mercola say, are, are much more significant. So, yes. yeah, for people who have extra money to get that upgrade on that sauna, sure. But I'd rather see somebody get the basic sauna and then upgrade not on the sauna but on a bed uh, canopy to protect because you're going to get a lot more benefit eight hours in your bed while you're rejuvenating by having no EMFs than that you are for the hour a day in the sauna. Yeah, that's a very good point. Very good point. But that is the, an option for people that are just yeah, yeah. really for people in, who can do both. Yes, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, so, so let's talk about the nice and flush protocol that you sure. recommend people do. What is that all about? Just explain it to us. Yeah, it's a good question. So as you know, probably not everybody knows this, but toxins primarily store in your fat cells. That's where they accumulate in the fat cells. And so however old you are, you have that many years worth of toxins stored in your fat cells. And if you just hop in a sauna, you're going to sweat out a little bit of that, but not a whole lot. So you have to find a way to release the toxins from your fat cells. Well, it turns out there's a miracle B vitamin that does that. And nobody's talked about it because it's not my special patented $800 B vitamin. And it's niacin. And that niacin causes, it's called lipolysis, which is a rupturing of the fat cells, which releases the toxins. And then you get in the sauna. This is an oversimplification. We can get into more details in a second. And you release the toxins, and then you sweat out the toxins in the sauna. And that is uh, basically a way that you can, if you're 30 years old, you can get rid of 30 years worth of stored toxins in just a few weeks by doing this detox protocol. There's a, there's a lot more detail to it than that, but that's the, the simplified version of it, uh, is the niacin releases those stored toxins um, and when you get rid of those stored toxins, you rejuvenate your health in a major, major way. That's why Dr. Mercola at the um, one of the conferences in 2010, David Wolf's com conference, I'm trying to remember the name of it, um, Longevity Now, I think, mm -hmm. conference. Yeah, he said it's the best detoxification in the world because it makes sense because you're getting to the root of it. Um, you're getting to the source of the toxins, which is the fat cells. And that's what the niacin does. Yes. And so what form of niacin and how much would you generally recommend that people take and at what, what point prior to their sauna use? Yeah, it's a great question. So um, you need to take a flushing dose of niacin, but there, I try, you try to get the Goldilocks dose is what you try to do. Um, so some people get excited. They're like, okay, I'm going to take 500 milligrams of niacin. <laughs> and then they, you know, they feel like they ate a gallon of salsa, you know, they're just burning up. It's just way too much. So the recommended dosage, according to the book, which in my Facebook group, you can get a book and free book and all the information you need all for free. Um, cause I'm just empowering people to do this detox protocol, but you start out at, at 25 milligrams. If you're like super sensitive and paranoid or 50 milligrams, if you're not so worried or a hundred, if you're a little bit on the radical side. So somewhere in that range is where you'd want to start with. And then you want to dose up because it's about a three week detox protocol. So you want to keep that mild flush. That's kind of, you want to stay in the Goldilocks dose now. So there's not a number. I can't tell you a number because everybody's different. Yes. Uh, the, you have to start, so, start at the small dose and then titrate up and see where your threshold is. Right. And then that's going to keep moving up because you adapt over the three weeks when you're doing the detox protocol, because it is a three week everyday protocol. I don't recommend some of the people who haven't studied it, who promote it like Dr. Mercola, he's promoted it. And I'm thankful for that, but he's so dang busy. He hasn't thoroughly investigated the protocol. So he's like, yeah, just take niacin and get in the sauna. It's like when you talk to all the experts in the world on this protocol, with the exception of one that happens to be a big promoter, Dr. Yu, um, they all agree that you do it every single day. And part of the reason you do it every single day is because the niacin keeps releasing toxins even after you get out of the sauna. So you can't just skip a day because it's still dumping toxins. And we're talking a year's worth of stored toxins in a day. Can you imagine all the toxins you've accumulated in an entire mm -hmm. year being dumped in a day? That's a big deal. 
And so you really have to make sure that you sweat out those toxins and you do it every day and you take all the other supplements. There's a bunch of other supplements. These aren't proprietary supplements. It's not like you have to buy my supplement brands or anything like that. But this protocol that's been proven and used in drug detox centers for over 60 years has a very uh, comprehensive list of supplements that are complementary and are very necessary because you burn up. You can imagine, you know, you burn up nutrients with when you're detoxing. Well, imagine detoxing a year, a year's worth of toxins in a day. You yeah. use up a lot of very specific nutrients. Yes. And, and so the you, protocol has for that. Do you recommend people take binders and things like that while they're doing the sauna? I do. I think binders are a good idea. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a very complicated and nuanced issue. And people like oversimplified, hey, what do I take? Do I take charcoal? Do I take this? And it's like, well, you know, it's, it's complicated and, it, and you have to time it. You know, I could do a whole talk on binders. So um, you've made some good recommendations that I agree with in the past on binders. So, um, but you have to be thoughtful about binders. You don't want to just, just, just take binders as a principle. Um, you have to be careful because otherwise it's absorbing the nutrients or even things like bentonite clay can turn into rocks. In if you take too much at a time, you have to spread it out. Um, I've had people that had, we'll just put it nicely, had problems going to the bathroom after they were deta after they did a fast after taking too much bentonite clay, because it literally turned into rocks. So, um, so yeah, you just have to be thoughtful about binders. Yeah, and things like diatomaceous earth is actually they're very sharp. Uh, it's you know ground up you know shells, and so uh, that can be very very sharp and can be really problematic if someone has leaky gut. It can actually get into their bloodstream and cause micro cuts in their arteries and things like that. So you have to be very very careful with any type of binder or detox method that you use. Yeah. And so Absolutely. let's talk a little bit about uh, the the evidence for its effectiveness. Uh, can you speak a little bit about, you know, who endorses the detox protocols and, and any other tips you can give us uh, for this type of detoxification method? Sure. Absolutely. So, you know, the thing you uh, asking the right questions is often the, the uh, most important thing. And so the right question, if you're talking detoxification, is who are the top experts in the world on detoxification? And that would be the people who study environmental medicine, because that's the area of, as you know, of detoxification and toxins. And the founder of environmental medicine, Theron Randolph, back in the day, he wrote a book on detoxification. And in his book, he has one chapter on detoxification, and he talks about one detox method. So the founder of environmental medicine says, here's the method. And it's called, now there's is different names. It was originally called the Hubbard Protocol because the guy's name was Ron Hubbard, the, say, the founder of Scientology. Now, don't worry if you take niacin and get in the sauna, I promise you won't become a Scientologist, okay? It's not some secret formula. But he was a creative guy and he, he was a humanitarian and he came up with this to help drug people, people who had drug addiction issues. And it turned out to be very effective. Um, in fact, he worked with uh, Abraham Hoffer and some of the other nutritional uh, experts of the day to create it. So um, so he recommends it, um, Th Theron Randolph, the founder of environmental medicine, and, and then also um, Walter Crinion. Are you familiar with Walter Crinion? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Joseph Pizzorno and him just wrote an academic textbook on toxins. And Walter Crinion in his clinic for over a decade just did this detox protocol because it was so effective. Now he quit doing it because the old version of the detox protocol took five hours a day in the sauna. Mm. <laughs> it was just, it was brutal. It was really hard on people. Well, I did some proprietary research and found out that we could actually, if we time the niacin right, which is three hours. See, they used to say, we'll just get in the sauna after taking the niacin. But I found some research that showed that it actually takes three hours before it releases the toxins. And once we implemented that research, after I worked with the top experts in the world on this detox protocol, we found that if we, if we got people in the sauna right after that, they could actually do it in just an hour a day. And so that made it very actionable for people. And in an infrared sauna, which is only 130 or so degrees instead of a 200 degree traditional hot rock sauna. So that really made the protocol actionable for people and doable. And now um, the number one expert, the guy who wrote the forward in the detox book, um, David Root, it now does my method, which is why I call it smart detox because it's a smarter way of doing it. He actually does that method in his clinic as well. So uh, timing the niacin is a crucial element um, of the detox protocol. So Walter Crinion used it, recommended it. Um, they used it on Gulf War veterans. Uh, the government spent 
almost a million dollars detoxifying Gulf War veterans using this protocol. The September 11 firefighters used it. Oil spill cleanup workers. Mm. Um, it's been used in drug detox centers for over 60 years. It's the most well-proven, even in the peer-reviewed literature, uh, you know, it's the most well-proven detox method. They've done pre and post fat biopsies, which is the gold standard of evidence in detoxification. And they found a 40 to 60% reduction of toxins. Wow. In just three weeks. In just three weeks. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It, it does an absolutely amazing job. So, but again, the reason you haven't heard of this is it, is it used to be a $10,000 detox protocol. You used to have to go to a clinic, spend $10,000 to do it. I saw that and thought, you know what? There's too many people suffering because of toxins. I'm going to I'm gonna bring this to the world. And so I created the Facebook group. And then it was just too darn hard for people to do four hours a day in the sauna. And then I figured out a way that they could do it and provide all the information. And that's why I have almost 20,000 group members because everybody's like, gosh, I can do this on my own for a couple hundred dollars worth of vitamins and yes. a sauna or even a bathtub, for goodness sake. We've actually even had people do it in their bathtub who just couldn't use a sauna um, you know, could, didn't have access or whatever. So, um, so yeah, it's very exciting because of the stories you hear of people absolutely changing their lives, people with adrenal fatigue that couldn't function, who have their lives back yeah. because the, the toxins, when they get in the mitochondria, cause them to cause them to switch from aerobic to anaerobic. So they produce 19 times less energy. Yeah. So the toxins really zap, zap the energy. And so when you get rid of those toxins, you rejuvenate your energy. And Walter Krenyan with autoimmune diseases, he says that, that it's a slam dunk if you detoxify somebody. If they have an autoimmune disease and you detoxify them, it's taken care of. Yes. That's his quote, not mine. And I found that to be very true with multiple autoimmune diseases. Yeah, and it's so true for so many uh, diseases because we know that so many diseases are mitochondria based and we know that toxins interfere in mitochondria. I talk about that a lot on the podcast. And we know that toxins interfere in metabolic issues, brain function, in absorption of nutrients, uh, and just so every different metabolic uh, function of your body, your thyroid, your adrenals, your hormones, uh, all these toxins affect so many uh, different mechanisms in the body. Get rid of the toxins, guess what? The mechanisms begin working again, the metabolic issues begin to disappear, the weight begins to fall off and the energy uh, becomes restored, your body's ability to produce energy improves. So you have improved sleep, improved energy, improved ability to heal. And so that takes care of the domino effect takes care of so many different health issues as a result, even mystery illness that people have that doctors don't know what's wrong with people and you know, can't find, figure out, give them a garbage can diagnosis and send them home with no cure. Yeah, very well said there. You know, it's interesting. Dr. Joseph Pizzorno, as you probably know, founded Bashir University. He's considered the godfather of evidence-based natural medicine. For 40 years, he used natural methods to heal people. And then in the last 10 years, he found that those methods, acupuncture, diet, exercise, nutrition, therapy, all these things, they weren't working like they used to. And he didn't know why. And then he just randomly detoxified somebody and then the remedy worked. And he thought, I wonder if this is it. And then he ended up getting a blank check from some oil billionaire who allowed him to study it. And he has now concluded, and this is not just some random guy spouting off. And I mean, this is the most respected person in the in natural health. He says that toxins are more of an issue than deficiency is. Mm -hmm. And I mean, our soils are depleted. Or we don't have any nutrients in our soils and our food. And yet toxins are even an issue than deficiencies are according yes. to him, which is why he's, he's focusing on that. And so, um, so your work is, is really, really helping a lot of people because you've very much focused on that. And, um, it's really the missing link because everybody knows about, about diet, you know, it's like, oh yeah, you should eat healthy. You should eat organic. You should do these things. Everybody knows about that. But when it comes to detoxification, it's like, well, yeah, just, just have some juice or do a juice lens or something. It's like, yeah. what? You know, it's, there's more to it than that. So, yeah, and that's what um, I talk about a lot, that, that so many people are eating an amazing diet, listening to this podcast, working on your health, working full-time, eating, a, making great choices, eating fresh food, organic food, taking amazing, high-quality, very expensive supplements, trying to exercise, trying to sleep, trying to reduce stress, and you still don't feel well. And that's exactly where I was and why, uh, and I just got very, very lucky very early in my health journey when I started having health issues. I found a, a detoxification website, Dr. L. Wilson's website, Dr. Lawrence mm -hmm. Wilson's, and started de doing a sauna and detoxing coffee enemas. And I felt really good uh, within a very short period of time. And I thought, this is, this is it. And that's why I got so passionate about it and sharing this message with other people because this is that missing element, that missing piece of the puzzle in your health regime. 
It is, and it's it's increasingly becoming more of an issue. It's increased, you know, as toxins have been increasing in the last sixty years, it's increasingly more of an issue. So it's it's where I would say ninety five percent of people can get the most benefit in their health if they said if I can only do one thing, you know, it's like well detoxify. That's where you're going to get the most benefit for ninety five percent of people. I mean, there's five percent that you know other things would help them, but that's where most people can get the most yield, especially health conscious people, because there's a we have this view that if I if I eat the right diet and exercise, I'm good, right? I'm healthy. I'm I'm non toxic. There's a view. And I think it has to do with with our the fact that it's a we have a Christian culture, and so we there's a kind of this element of forgiveness. Like, oh, I, I I don't do that anymore. Like when I was in high school and stuff, I partied and I did all this stuff and I used to eat garbage, but I don't do that anymore. So like I'm forgiven. Well, no, no, it's not a <laughs> sin issue, but but it's it, these toxins have accumulated. So the choices that you made 20 years ago, those toxins are stored in your fat cells, and every time you're sleeping, every time you're between meals. You're, you're burning those, that fat and those toxins are being reintroduced into your system from 20 years ago. So you have to get rid of the stored toxins. And once you do that, everything shifts in your health. That's an excellent, excellent point. And one I can't stress enough to any client that I'm working with on a one-on-one -on -one basis is that it doesn't matter if you quit smoking 30 years ago. That cadmium and that lead and that arsenic and the other 4,000 chemicals and metals that are put in tobacco, naturally occurring and added, are still in your system. My father quit smoking seven years before his esophageal cancer diagnosis, and that killed him. You know, his cancer treatments and the toxin load in his body. And, um, you know, if you uh, ate uh, you know, the partially hydrogenated oils and fast foods and, and packaged foods and whatnot, uh, you know, but you'd stop 10 years ago, but you ate those as a kid. Guess what? You still have those toxins in the nickel that's in that partially hydrogenated oils in your body. And so it doesn't matter if you've been taking such good care of yourself the past few years, you have to think about your past behavior. You ate conventional chicken, conventional eggs, that has tons of arsenic in it. Um, I used to eat a pollo loco thinking that I was uh, being healthy eating chicken, rice, and beans, and I was extremely arsenic toxic as a result right. of that healthy choice that I thought that I was making um, you know, as a lay person before I got into the health and nutrition. Um, so, uh, so yeah, you're still not out of the woods, even though you're now eat, leading a healthy lifestyle. Right. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And even if you are eating healthy and, and doing everything right, you're still getting toxins in the air, food and water, no matter how much you try to control. There's a lot of things you can do in your control. Um, but you can, you're still breathing in air. You, if you don't have a whole house water filter, you're getting stuff in the shower, even if you're drinking filtered water, um, even if you're eating organic food, it can be, it's not metal free, it's pesticide free. Um, but the organic food can still have metal, still be irrigated with water that has metals in it. There's a lot of different Right. Uh, uh, you know, sources of, of exposure that we have, even if we're eat, uh, living an incredibly healthy lifestyle. So you really want to be thinking about adding detoxification to your health regime, even if you're making uh, amazing choices every day for your health. Yeah. Well, the thing is, that's, a, that's an excellent point. And it, it's another way to say it is that is that um, a lot of people grade on a curve. You know, they're like, well, you know, I, everybody else, they're doing this and they're doing that. But I, I do this. I eat organic most of the time and I do this. And it's like, it doesn't matter because, I mean, it, that's great. Don't get me wrong. I mean, pat yourself on the back. Yes. But the the fact that your your shower curtain's made out of, out of plastics, which outgasses toxins while you're in there, if you don't have a shower filter, every toxin that you're exposed to has an effect. And being a toxin expert, I can tell you that even I, living on the side of a mountain in Idaho, on 20 acres with spring water running down the mountain, um, cooking all my own food, sourcing all my own food, I'm still exposed to more toxins than 99% of people throughout the throughout all of history were exposed to. So if you compare me to all of me being one of the most conscious people in that narrow area, I'm exposed to more toxins than almost everybody in the in the history of the world is until until the last 60 years. So no matter how good a job you're doing, you know. And you're doing better than everybody else, and congratulations on that. But you still have to, you know, even if you, you still have to take a shower once in a while, even if you're, even if you don't work a dirty job, because there's, there's stuff that accumulates and there's toxins that accumulate. And, um, and our bodies were never designed to deal with this petrochemical onslaught of toxins that we're exposed to. Um, 
And I, I've thought about doing a talk on all the toxins that people are exposed to in a day. Um, but I just wouldn't want people to feel overwhelmed with it. But just suffice it to say that detoxification, I still spend an hour a day in the sauna. Now, why would I do that? I live on the side of the mountain, pristine, North Idaho air on the lake, you know, eat all my organic, all this clean lifestyle. Because there's still toxins. I wear dust, gas masks when I'm out. If I ever work with chemicals, I have rubber gloves. The whole deal, extreme. Like people would laugh at me. But I still detoxify because I know that there's still toxins getting in and and I'm able to maintain optimal health and feel great as a result of firstly getting rid of the body burden of toxins by doing the smart detox protocol with the niacin and then maintaining those gains by doing a sauna regularly. And you're preventing disease, you're preventing yourself from having to go on medications or you're, you're, you know, you're getting sick and going to the doctor and they're going to prescribe you some sort of medication uh, that's usually it's a toxin induced illness, uh, in my opinion, and you're going to be living longer. Yeah. There's so many different health benefits and uh, prevention that you are doing when you do an infrared sauna. Absolutely. And Absolutely. Let, let's talk a little bit uh, to the naysayers out there uh, that claim that we don't need to detox or do detox protocols <laughs> or take detox supplements because we have a liver and our liver detoxes our body. What are your thoughts uh, on that? <laughs> well, um, you know, there are people who are in denial and uh, for people that are that way, I, I let them be, I don't, I don't argue with them because it's, you know, it's like a lot of things you, um, you can't convince somebody against their will, but, but somebody who's like open-minded and it's like, well, what about this argument? You know, and I think that's what you're asking. What about this argument? I'd say, well, okay, is this a science-based argument or, or, or a feeling-based? Because if we look at the NHANES data, which is the government data on toxicity, and, uh, you look at it, you see unbelievable amounts of toxins in everybody's bloodstream. Well, wait a minute. Don't we have a liver and kidneys and aren't we able to detoxify? Well, we all do, but, but for some reason it's not working. Well, why isn't it working? Well, because you can only detox because we're not adapted. We're not adapted to detoxify that, that level that we're exposed to. I mean, everything, again, that you, you look at the air pollution, the, um, the, um, the, literally everything you do almost has an element of toxicity to it nowadays. And throughout all of the history of humanity, we didn't have that level of toxicity to it. Um, from our clothing to our skincare products, to the water, um, to the food that we eat. Um, it's, it's, uh, like atrazine, for example, that's not a widely known toxin, but it's actually, everybody's concerned about Roundup, but atrazine is one of the worst herbicides, um, that, that is used and it's in 60% of water supplies and it's, and it's absolutely horrible for human health. Um, and it also causes, um, causes frogs to become, uh, transgender male frogs to have frog eggs, to have female eggs. Um, and it's in 60% of the water supply and it stores in the fat cells. And so even if you're eating organic, if you've ever been in an area where where the water is that way, you're exposed to that. So, so to answer your question, it's um, it's such a denialist uh, mentality, and I get it because people feel helpless and overwhelmed, and they don't want to open Pandora's box. And so it's like, hey, I don't want to deal with that. I don't want to think about that. But you can you can deny the truth, but you can't deny the consequences of denying the truth. Yeah, that's and that's a... what people. <laughs> Yeah, that's what people think, but you can't. You can, they can deny it, but they're going to live the consequences. They're going to get disease. They're going to all those things you talked about that toxins cause, and so I feel compassion for those people. Um, but if, but I hate that they're trying to spread their dogma. Um, and a lot of, a, a lot of Western medicine does that. There's no such thing as toxicity. Toxicity. It's like, well, why are there journals, academic journals of toxicity? That I mean, what the heck? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How'd they ever get published? Yeah, you know? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's funny when I have people, actually, well-known health people, uh, health supplements. Well, that detox, that's just all BS. And I thought, okay, well, good luck with that. You know, right. um, but but yeah. So let's talk a little bit about the the supplements that you recommend with the nice and flesh. Just give us a kind of an overview of what are the additional supplements that you would recommend with the, the nice and flesh sauna protocol? Yeah. So the entire list of supplements is in the free book that's in our, it's, which is in my Facebook group. Um, so what's the I'll name of the Facebook group? 
It's uh, called Smart Detox is the name of it. Or you could just type in fbl.me, like frankbilllarry.me forward slash detox in your browser. And that'll get you to this to the group, to the Facebook group. So that's in the file section. The free book is. Um, and then it's got a list of all the supplements. And like, like I said, all the information is free. Um, and, but to simplify, just to give you a simple overview, which is what I think you're asking. Um, so the B vitamins all work together, complementary and synergistically. And so when you're taking high dose vitamin B3, niacin, you want to have a proportional dose of the other B vitamins. So that's one of the elements to it. Um, and there's other, um, there's a bunch of other nutrients. I mean, it's like it's like a good multivitamin essentially, but very specific dosages that they've proven over a long period of time. And there's also uh, to to be helpful and effective. And then then there's also the polyunsaturated oils yes. that we uh, that we use, which actually help to capture the uh, fat soluble toxins in the digestive tract. Um, so that's I've made updates to the book because the book was written a long time ago and that's one of the, so I changed the niacin timing into an infrared sauna. And then I also changed a couple of the supplements. I changed the oils because they didn't, they didn't choose the best oils. Um, and I, that's not really disputed. Um, so hemp oil is really the best oil that I recommend because it's 79% polyunsaturated. It's easy to get a pretty clean organic hemp oil. It's affordable. Um, Flaxseed oil is another reasonable option, but hemp is really the best option. Um, and then there's just the standard, um, you know, uh, minerals, and then also uh, calcium and magnesium. Um, and that's another element that I've switched because of of the changes. Uh, it used to be equal amounts of calcium and magnesium, but now I have more magnesium in there. So, and then also uh, electrolytes, potassium, and the other electrolyte and minerals that are lost when because you're sweating out a lot of uh, minerals and nutrients um, as well. So, um, but they're just standard common nutrients that you'd recognize, but it's very specific dosages. That's kind of the key because um, they've really perfected it in terms of getting the nutrients that are complementary. because this is a, the thing that people don't realize who get excited about this detox protocol, this is a professional level detox protocol. Okay. You go to a clinic, it's $10,000. So Please don't just take niacin and get in the sauna and take your multivitamin and call <laughs> yeah. it good. Please yeah. don't do that. Please don't do that. <laughs> Either read the book or I even have a lady in our group who, who is a professional who will guide you through the detox protocol. If you don't want to do the heavy lifting and figure it all out, how to do the Goldilocks dose and how to do all the vitamins, like she'll guide you and it's $3,000 at her clinic. She'll guide you for a tenth of that in the comfort of your own home. Cause she's just a benevolent person who's humanitarian like I am and who just cares about people. And, and so you can get professional guidance from her for a 10th of the price. So it's a professional level protocol. So either do some heavy lifting, read the free book, you know, or get some guidance. But when you do that, it's the, it's a way that you can, you can get rid of 30 years or however old you are, decades of toxins in three weeks. And it's proven in the peer reviewed literature. I mean, that's freaking amazing for a couple hundred dollars worth of vitamins. And hour a day of sweating. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't get better than that. It's absolutely amazing, and it's it's recommended by the best people in the world, from Mercola to the founder of environmental medicine. Yes, and so talk about some of the contraindications uh, about this. There's some people that can be very, very ill that may not do well with that amount of uh, toxic load or toxins being released into their system. Some people are really sensitive to niacin; they can get very, 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 very itchy or uh, can have an, uh, some sort of reaction with taking high dose niacin. What are some of the contraindications? Yeah. So first, I'd say, of course, check with your doctor <laughs> uh, before doing any detox protocol. Just to just to cover myself. Um, so what I would say is uh, a lot of people in the health and wellness field or in this space or listening to these podcasts, they have a lot of health issues. And somebody who's really sick, um, I, I wouldn't say, hey, jump in and do the protocol. It's going to change your life, whatever. I'd be like, hey, you know, baby steps here. You know, let's let's just why don't you try a sauna for 10 minutes and see how it works for you. And then they're like, oh, that was pretty tough. OK, we'll do five minutes next time. And I, in my group, I have a method that, that I talk about where you start at a low temperature and raise the temperature and time five minutes a day and, and five degrees each day. Start out really low and then just not even, no niacin, no niacin, just work your way up slowly because you, now if you're super healthy, like I was, and I just jumped in it and did it oh, fine, no problem. Um, but for those that are health compromised, 
you want to be able to, you need to an hour of, of sauna a day. And for some people, that's just, that's really tough. Like, um, I've had adrenal fatigue people who, who suffer through it. I mean, I don't know how else to say it. I'm just trying to be authentic and, but afterward change life. Uh, so ideally build yourself up. If it takes you six months or eight months of sauna use before you can do the detox protocol, that's fine. If you if you trout the surface toxins, you're going to get massive improvements as you go. Um, so I would say that you you definitely want to work your way up slowly if you're health compromised. Um, and we do have a list of I think I'd have to double check our files of the contraindications for specific conditions. Um, and you're you know they've used niacin in in um, in, to reduce um, high blood pressure for decades um, in very, very high doses. And they, they haven't shown any terrible adverse side effects. They're usually fine. So the vast majority of people don't have a problem with it. And we're starting off slowly and working our way up. Um, so I haven't had many issues, even with 20,000 group members, um, you know, if people do the protocol properly. I just commented on a post. Somebody said, oh, I had these terrible side effects. And it, and I know if I ask the question, this is the problem with the do-it-yourself version, and this is this is the challenge that I have, is it's like, well, okay, so you, you're gonna charge people ten thousand dollars at a clinic, or you're gonna tell them, oh, you can do it yourself. Well, people do it. People the do-it-yourself attitude people like myself, they're sloppy. You know, they're like, <laughs> okay, I got it, I got it. Some, they we'll don't read the directions. Yeah, well, I don't need that. You know, I'll just he said nice in three hours. What else do I need to know? <laughs> and then, like, I had one lady have her hair fall out. And, mm. and it's like, oh, why is my hair falling out? Well, she went to her nature bath and then, um, and then she got her, all of her levels and her iron levels were massively depleted. I was like, yeah, you burn up a ton of iron doing this detox protocol. So you need to take iron supplementation. And then she took iron supplementation and then her hair quit falling out. It's like, well, that was just in the supplement list, you know, but, uh, so you just have to make sure that you follow the instructions. And I, I, I don't want to be that guy who's constantly nagging about it. And so I don't constantly nag about it. But for your listeners, that's just really important. Um, it, so the people who follow the instructions usually get anywhere between good results and excellent results with the detox protocol. But for those who are health compromised, definitely start slow. And if it takes you a year before you can do the detox protocol, hey, you've gotten a year of sauna use and you've improved your health in that time. So well, fantastic. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show, Brett. Why don't you tell the listeners where they can find you and any, any other pertinent information you may want them to know? Sure, sure. Yeah, so um, I'm not super tech savvy, so I don't have a website or and I don't do coaching or anything like that. Um, so everything is in my Facebook group and I've made it as user friendly as possible and as easy to find as possible. So um just go to my Facebook group and I think you can probably put the link below, but if you put smart detox in Facebook or, um, or my name on Google, you'll find it. Um, or the easiest way is to type FBL like Frank, Bill, Larry dot me forward slash detox in the browser. And that will take you directly to my group and all the information, the free book, all the information is in there as well as loads of information on how to avoid toxins and the benefits of saunas and like, tons and tons of information. Um, it's a very popular group. So check out my Facebook group, get the free book, learn the detox protocol, and uh, you'll be very glad that you did. Well, fantastic. Well, Brett, thank you so much for coming on the show. And listeners, if you want to learn more about me, Wendy Myers, you can go to myersdetox.com. I have hundreds of articles, hundreds of podcasts about detoxification and diet and health in general. And please take a couple of minutes to go to iTunes and leave us a review so that we can reach more people. I want to reach as many people as possible and get the word out about the importance of adding detox to your health regimen. Thank you so much for joining us and we will talk to you about detox next week.